Mineski. This is uh, obviously Mineski is up. Oh, sorry, Mineski is down Radiant one. I did actually bother to pull up the group stages in between to take a look, and it does feel like they. Oh, hello, hello there, Yosin. You're unmuted. Um, it does look like a lot of teams have drawn already today, and Mineski actually hadn't played theirs, and Complexity managed to draw their first match. I think it was against Ehome. Ehome, yeah, that's actually really impressive. Ten that is very impressive. Remaining. So. And next up, anyway, I'm Llama Down Under, I'm joined by Eosin. We've got Lokadope now joining us on stats since we're actually in the lobby. And with that, folks, we got Pix and Ben flying out. How do you feel about these bad boys, Eosin? Mmm, and SK are pretty much with the same opening, right? This is exactly the same thing from last game. Their uh, first two bands and then their first pick. Uh, I'm kind of surprised to see, to see that they didn't ban Chen. I also, I yeah, I mean, seconds remaining. go ahead. I, I think they must think that they can deal with it after Five seconds how remaining. in game one, it, obviously it helped their demise, but I think that they Reserve time. maybe feel confident that if they lane a little bit better, I agree with you though. Surprising to not ban out the Chen. Mm, we'll have to see what Swindles is going to come up with next. I, I feel like he's one of the captains who, even though you win with it, he won't do the same thing again. He's just gonna pick something else entirely. They're just gonna completely change their draft. That's what I think they're gonna do. Speaking of completely changing their draft, got some intel that in the first game between Complexity and Ehome, Complexity ran a level one Roche, but then they lost the game to Ehome. They did get the level one Aegis. They open up strong though. Holy Hannah. Yeah. Avenge and Void. Avenge is a popular pick against Void, so just took them both together. Yeah, and it's like this is what I meant. in the bat. Like, even though they won with a completely different lineup, they just go for something else completely different. Yeah, I I really like this. It keeps your opponents on your toes. It's also important to mention, folks, this is a round robin. You play every team twice. Radiant if you give back. people too many opportunities to figure out your strategies, it could really hurt you if you do make it out of the group stages. Complexity. So complexity are going with back. the we can do anything we want mentality. I also personally enjoy it. I do feel Radiant like this pack is very back. open. And uh, Mineski, not one to let an opportunity pass them by, pick up the Chen, immediately ban out the AA. Makes a lot of sense. They do end up going for a push, which you can certainly do with an Invoker. Having an AA just stop all of your sustain Ten is pretty dang painful. Remaining. Complexities turn to ban. I feel like, uh... Banning AA just for Chen isn't enough. I feel like if they're banning AA, they're, they have something else they want to pick that's gonna be heal-related. That's just my guess, though. Ten seconds remaining. And for com as for complexity, I feel like it's Five definitely going to be an offlane void. So they need some kind of setup complexity for this void. Gyrocopter. Yeah, no. Gyro's, yeah. Gyro's is a really good setup. Pick. Not a setup, a really good combo with the Chronosphere. Yeah, there's. In most cases, you would say a hero like Gyro, not that great, right? Because he's so short-ranged, but of course, this guy has Black Cannon, he can just drop the cooldown on it. Depending on where you position, you can even get the Rocket Barrage on people. I mean, as long as the Flag Cannon's up, I think you do a ridiculous amount of damage. Ten seconds. I mean, Gyro's just one of those carries. He's always good. Five seconds bad, I, I feel like there's very little situations where you can be like, oh, Gyro's really terrible here. Reserve Just one of those carries. It's always good, so. And uh, I know that Complexity actually like to run a mid sometimes too, where you max the rocket. Yeah. So they might be some kind of setup for that too. Uh, Complexity has done one of the, I don't know if you've seen this in... Uh, sometimes funny things happen in the America's Dota scene, just I think because you can sometimes get away with a lot more than you can in other scenes. And I have seen the six fairy fires gyro a mid that wins the lane before in Americas. Not sure that, you get away with that in any other I region. have never seen that before, but that sounds pretty funny. It it was in a competitive match and 
I was just sitting there going, what am I watching? But as you said, it's very flexible where you can put this gyrocopter. If you have strong roaming supports, you can get away with a lot. And if you're just playing him to get the levels to combo up with Faceless Void, if you're okay with him taking a little bit less form, you can certainly put him kind of wherever. I think I think he's definitely the best at the moment in just the off lane. Until someone else figures out a more suitable way to play him, I think in my opinion, I think he's best in the off lane. Now, we're gonna be seeing Mineski take a long time on this pickup. They banned out the enchants. They liked the Abaddon in the off lane last game. It's Something I still think can be nice, but Gyrocopter would burn through that Aphotic Shield. Faceless Void, you know, can poke at you, can ult you after the borrowed time. Do you think they'll go for it again? Mm, I don't think so. I don't. Th I don't think a Baden is a necessary pick here. It's not. I don't. I don't feel like it's something they really, really need. It doesn't. I don't think it offers too much either. Um, I think of anything they need to. Focus on getting down this void more than anything. And I think their carry and whatever support they end up picking is going to be a combination where they can shut down the void. In order to shut down void, Ten seconds uh, remaining. I feel like one of the best ways is five seconds remaining. anti-mage. I think anti-mage is really good. So we might see an anti-mage. He He's a very easy... It's the right way to say this. He's no longer so RNG based with the changes to time walk, giving you the ability to get rid of two seconds, I believe, of damage that has just gone by. And he also... I feel like we talked about it. He's very strong because he has that escape. He can also be an initiator. I've seen some people pick up a blink on him. I'm not so sure how they best handle him, Void. But I do like seeing the Tusk... Obviously a strong ganker. You can pair that up with Chen. You can snowball in the creeps. That's super powerful. So again, this mid might be a scary place. Yeah, that's a really nice thing about the snowball. Snowballing and centaur stomps and whatnot is really, really strong for especially ganking the mid lane. Just uh, nothing you can do about it, really. But um, like I said, Void is really hard to shut down in lane because of how strong time walk is. And the best way to deal with him is just to force him out of the lane by draining all his mana. That's why I think anti -mate. Ten seconds remaining. Alternatively, yeah. you can pick Lion or something like that. I do Radiant wonder if they'll want something like the anti-mage, because I think that here Mineski actually have a really great push lineup. That's the other reason I was maybe so. Okay. I, everything I was about to say is, is not important. This is kind of interesting here, because I do feel like picking a Broodmother into... Flat cannon into our chronosphere, which reveals invis units. Ten what? seconds remaining. Well, it's like in, in terms remaining. of the laning phase, you can't really do much against Broodmother. It's really hard to deal with Broodmother in the laning phase because not like time. it's not like flat cannon is gonna gonna shred all the sh uh, the spiderlings Radiant apart because you know back. you're only you don't have many items and that kind of. And by the time you have chrono. Broodmother is probably a already done job, just, you know, ruined the safe lane. <laughs> Alternatively, they might give him the 1v1 lane against the Void or something like that, you know. I don't think that would happen, though, actually. I, I think there's going to be off-lane Brood. Because they're, they, they, I'm pretty sure they know that Kaposi have run Marana mid lane, too. So, whatever yeah. they draft last is going to have the support. Commander. And it's going to be an LC, so this is where... Yeah, <laughs> this is support, support Marana, I guess. Haven't seen this in a while. Uh, they... She's gotten a lot better, obviously, with the changes to the fact that the arrow can kill off creeps. You can get easy levels by arrowing the big creep in camps. It is going to be Z-Freak on that. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about here for the Marana is she doesn't have what looks to be an easy setup. It's, it's, a, it's the dual setup. Prepare for battle. Yeah. It's the really? dual setup, it's the chrono setup. Yeah. I think not, if... I, I, I'm not talking about early game, I'm talking about just like... Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. You mean game. later. And that's... How did the courier already... Oh, okay, he TP'd and popped it out. I was like, bro, how did you get that out there? <laughs> oh, and we are still in prison mode. Let me fix that up. Sorry, folks. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of prison in your lives. 
to help out. So, back on topic. Early game, though, I think this is the trouble with the support, Marana. You have to be hitting arrows. Um, it's, I mean, ever since they made that change to the arrow, it's actually not as bad. If you miss an arrow, it's okay. You can always just go and farm creeps. Uh, you actually farm kind of... You kind of farm at a decent rate, too. 17 second arrow, killing one big creep. Oh, here we go. Here comes the arrow. Yeah, they're gonna and land it on to Potato, and he is going down, as you said. First, first blood. blood. I think this perfect I world server is lagging bitch. just a little bit. <laughs> it looks like we're good. Yeah, I definitely had some lag there. I heard the arrow hit, and then I saw the arrow fly, and I was like, that, that's not how that spell works. But complexity, off to a good start. Is Chessie gonna also try for top rune? Are they gonna get both so. runes? They're gonna get both runes. Oh, what a disaster. This it's not... Nicely. Historically speaking, it's not too bad. It ups your win rate a bit. Not a super hugely significant amount, but... It does make your mid really hard, and he's gonna be limp on that mid gyre, although he hasn't gone a million uh, fairy fires. Oh, this is a jungling brood. She's just starting right jungle. Not even gonna go top lane. So they Which... picked L they picked LC because it's good against Brood. So they yeah. just she's just dodging the lane entirely. Although it's not like LC is bad when they get free farm in a lane. Raging Potato gonna take the stun. We're gonna see another arrow flying out. Hits on Raging Potato, and that is our second blood going down. We are in fact lagging a little bit to Perfect World. I'm gonna do a quick reconnect, folks. Oh, actually, I'm gonna try to see. Okay, Swindle Melon is gonna be fine. I'm gonna do a quick reconnect. Anything good happening right now, Yusin? Mm, nothing much. Uh, Venge is just suiciding the creeps. Radiance middle getting a free heal, going back. So, they have oh. figured out where Ryor is. I think he's just gonna leech. Um, not too much he can do at this point. <laughs> Both sides know exactly where the other is, and now again in mid, they hit the arrow onto Potato! Oh no, they don't actually. I hear it fly and it ends up landing on the creep. I saw the stun and I was really worried that we were lagging, but I think we're good. So... Yeah, I don't that's, think that's that. Third, in case you are wondering. Yeah. It's the homing rocket into arrow. Yeah, and Raging Potato very smartly has gotten ready to get the Forge Spirits up, you know? Realizing that that's what he needs. We also do see them managing to pick up the Chen in the top lane, although he did a lot of damage to Chessie, but... Fine. Yeah. Dang, Plex is just so dead in all the lanes right now. Even with, uh... Rude jungling and Chen jungling, they're losing the jungle too. Yeah. And here comes the arrow... Oh. Yeah. Good, uh... What's up? Blocking the arrow with the Forge Spirit. The problem is the cooldowns on the Forge Spirit is incredibly long, and the cooldown on the arrow and the missile is a little shorter. Yeah, mid is a disaster for Mineski. He's already died twice, he can't even walk into his lane. This uh, invoker is having a really CS. rough time. Yeah. I mean, you just... I'm not sure how you salvage this one now. We're gonna see Hanskin given the stun out on Jules. It looks like the arrow gonna be off the mark this time, a bit too far away, but we have three heroes in mid. Oh, a snowball comes out. They don't actually bring anybody with them. The ice shot's off the mark. Not gonna block out Hanskin, and now Limp coming there with a rocket barrage. Gonna back on up and everything will calm down. Yeah, this is brutal for Minesi because they have, they're having such a hard time catching people out. They don't have enough uh, disables for these these pickoffs that they need. Like, you can't kill the Void ever, because your only only uh, disable is, you know, Ice Shard and Snowball. And what what that can it do, right? Because you can just time walk right past Ice Shards. And... Limp has support mid, kill him. And the Freak LC. can leap out. Yeah, the Freak can leap out. Only proper person you can kill is Venge. That failed. Yeah. So, it's 
looking rough for Mineski and looking like they're going to put themselves in a good spot for complexity since they did tie their first set and going 2-0. You just need to make top four of your group. The groups have five people in them each. It's around Robin, one point per win. And looking like we're about to see another arrow. Will this end up hitting? They're not quite sure. Yeah, the rocket won't be destroyed here. Raging Potato, not going to have an arrow thrown at him. Wow, my my game is actually really laggy. <laughs> uh, yeah, mine's a little laggy too. This is this is how perfect world goes sometimes. Um, you should give it a try reconnecting, but sometimes this is just how we do the Dota in China. Yeah, Squiddle's getting a ton of farm and XP mm -hmm. in his offlane. He's almost level. He's just hit level five. Once he gets level six, it's fairly easy to kill people with just uh, Chrono and an arrow. Well, it kind of depends. Razor's kind of hard to kill, but you, know, you have a Chrono. Definitely, someone's gonna die to it. Now we're gonna Same be seeing a gank attempt from the Chen fact. He misses out on his opportunity. The smoke not only runs out, but now he's walked by a ward. And as you said, here the arrow miss. Sundomal is just poking around, getting more farm. Yeah, he's interrupting the pole and everything, and there's nothing they can do to stop it. Okay, so saving Gracie. We got we got to think of a way that Mineski can get themselves back into this game. Obviously, rough start, Invoca, you know, 6 CS. It's not the end of the world, though. There are things they can do here. They have a lineup that will be able to group up and push some. Yeah. Um, I actually, yeah, I'm not too sure about their, their timing. It's so, it's so difficult for them because the Brood is jungling, and is because the Brood is jungling, the Chen is sacrificed completely. Like, he's level 3 at 6 minutes of the gym. Really bad as, uh, compared to, like, if you are normally farming a uh, jungle by yourself. Yep. And if you wait for the Chen, to hit six to push. It might be too late already. Oh, we have Chen going on Handskin a little. There's gonna be a net as well. The magic missile comes out. Handskin actually running aggressively towards them, not realizing that Invoker's come in. The auto attacks will have it, and now the duelist, Legion Commander, has to back on out. At the same time, though, it looks like Jesse Vash, he is hiding in the tree line. Whether this will be good or bad for him, oh, Swindermelon's managing to leap away, and there we go. I'm lagging now too. Oh yeah, perfect world. Give me, give me the, the oh. PowerPoint slideshow. It's looking like they're trying to go in on the Swindle Melons, but a stun is the arrow off the ball somehow. Swindle Melons still poking away at people. He's paused, <laughs> he's called the Chronosphere. They're going to take a lot of damage here. Cuckoo, one more auto attack will end up getting it. Swindle Melons jumps forward. Jesse Vash is fine, but Ryo not able to come in and get anything done. And this is a jungle route. Doesn't have incapacitating bite. All he has is spawn spider links. Not much you can do here. Yeah. Uh, and he used all, almost all of his webs too to farm. So there's no webs to fight with. <laughs> so as slideshow Dota continues, we'll be seeing that Gyrocopter. We haven't talked about him too much, but obviously with the Invoker push so far back, he's actually doing exceptionally well in this lane for a mid Gyrocopter. Radiance yep. top tower is under attack. Level eight to level five. And he can just build into all the normal things, right? As a gyro, he can just get yes. his Sanja and Yasha up. There's nothing he needs to change. Look at that rocket Radiance damage. It's actually yeah. half of Invoker's health. This is super rough for him. Welcome to being level 5 as an Invoker. Oh, Three Arrow's gonna fly out. It does not manage to hit onto Raging Potato, Radiance but they do attack. take the tower. And now, oh, the, there's no points up in flat cannon yet. We are going to be seeing a little bit of damage going out on the limb. They have some stuff with Chen Creeps. Can they get him off? It looks like they've killed him. He does use the cooldown. It's not going to be enough. And now Marana, Z Freak, not really able to do too much, even if she hits a big arrow. That's a, that's a really big kill for Maneski. They need whatever they can take right now. And they took the biggest target, so they're good for them. <laughs> that's really good for them. Or one of the biggest targets. Just he's a little higher level, but he almost has a blink dagger, so I expect him to be picking up a blink dagger and a smoke fairly soon and start racking up the dual damage. I 
I also think he's got a lot of good help from his Radiant's teammates in this lineup for top. making sure that he gets the kill. Yep. Obviously, Arrow isn't negligible. Swindle can't actually contribute that much, but Dyer's we'll see. Is under attack. Here it there comes. It is. He's gonna have his smoke broken, though, by the Broodmother, who's like, I want none of this business. But still, she goes in under the tower onto Cuckoo. There will be an Arrow follow-up. I don't think you get the jewel win here, but they may get the kill anyway. Marana getting it, and now, or Marana helping out with it. They catch out Ryor here, gets the bash. Swindle, really? Or in Jesus, and now Jesse gonna help out with that kill as well. Z Freak gets a little bit low, but it doesn't look like it'll be enough. The vanish comes out, the cooldown is pulled the zone away. Jesse Vash, and again, taking a lot of damage. They'll get another kill here. That was really unfortunate. Right they just kind of went in one by one trying to save people. Complexity is really low, but they don't really have an answer for picking people off. Anyways, goes back to the whole lack of disables. So. Yeah, and they are falling steadily behind 5k net worth at the 10 minute mark. 4,000 gold uh, experience. <laughs> and even. Well, even pretty good. Yeah, I would say it's doing pretty well. It's not the easiest of combos to land. Oh, Chassis gonna Thunder just blink attack. away from this incoming gank. Unfortunately, you get the chance to blink the dual damage despite having three heroes die, but... He... Definitely is making space for his team. They should... Try again. Like, they should just be going, uh... All over the place with this. Commander Potom, Marana combination. Yeah, Bottom even if kills. even if you don't get the jewel damage, obviously getting the kills will eventually result in you having enough damage to win those duels. Here comes a bit of the push. She'll probably use that overwhelming odds to get rid of some creeps. Goodness, PowerPoint, Dota, please. We're gonna be seeing Ryo try to go in. There is the stall fall, but it's looking like this tower taking heavy damage from Mineski, and they'll get themselves something, or will they? Gyrocopter TPing in, and a cooldown would kill off a lot of these minions, but instead, Plasma Field, the deny comes out, and I think that will be that, the engagement, although Chessie has the opportunity to go in here following that homing missile. It's gonna be on Cuckoo again, but he will be sent home in high? Yes. Oh, but Jesse, he's under the tower. He doesn't look like he got the duel off on anyone. He's taking some tower damage. The arrow gonna land on Jules. Now Jesse ready for that duel, and it's more than enough damage. Winner going his way, 14 damage. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. First successful duel of the game. Yeah. Yeah, and they're in a really good position for Chessie to just start racking up a ton of damage because they're so far ahead right now. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to give the reconnection another. Bottom tower has fallen. I'm gonna uh, give it a shot too. Seems to be good. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Sometimes it helps. It also does tend to get a bit worse in team fights. Um, just how world works so with that we are going to be seeing a successful gank on swindlebelm backtracks a lot of the damage but they are there and even with his ult and the maranas he goes down yeah no worries at all does look like Mineski trying to get some sort of push action going up in top. They all still fall behind, but anything they can get out of the map, even if this is a deny, it's not ideal, but it's something. And they need anything and everything right now. Oh. Oh, wow. Are fortified. Dyer's top Weird. Is under attack. <laughs> Oh, well, we're, we're way ahead of that. Um, we have taken a top tower successfully for Complexity. Unfortunately, uh, sorry, a top tower for Neski. Unfortunately, Complexity is doing Roshan very easily with the Minus Armor coming out of Handskin. Excellent. Oh. That is an interesting statistic. And we will see, ironically, Complexity has already lost a game today where they took the first Roshan, but still, it helps. It usually means that you have some early map dominance. Yes, folks, for those of you tuning in just now, the Darkcopter did go mid, so...
Now, we see Jesse Vash. I imagine he's going to be working on his... Uh, working on his arcanes. Chen should be their mech carrier. We've already talked about how he didn't get much form, so if this mech does come out at all, it'll be very late. Yeah, you definitely buy the mech on your on your Chen here. Um, you have to uh, rely on your Razor late game, so it's, it's, it's going to be way too difficult for him to go mech first, especially with the kind of start they're having right now. I think Ryo or Broodmother is going to die here, right? She is uh, in the danger zone, to put it politely. Her web does extend past that sentry, so she'll get on out of it. But unfortunately, Jules does die on the other side, and Chessie stacking up another win there when it comes to Jules. Middle tower is under attack. 28 damage. And Easy. Good. Yeah. 14 minutes in, he has blink and blade mail and two duels. It's, it's, it's really looking really good right now. So, Mineski, I, I, let's talk some sort of team fight, because they have to try and get something done. Chessie actually taking a little bit of damage there, but the Moonlight Shadows are going to get him a completely clean disengage. Swindle Melons maybe can use this to set up for something. Do you, it looks like maybe he'll be building a Vlad. Do you actually go for a Blink or something here on the faceless? Because I've seen that a few times. Yeah, you might, yeah normally, normally the, the standard build at the moment is that you just buy Vlad's then you buy Blink, and then you buy Scepter. So it's the common build-up. Only difference with Swindle's build right now is that he bought Midas, which I think is the right choice considering how far ahead they are. Yeah. Not an item pickup he was going to be punished for. And also, oh, we'll see. He does have the Chronosphere. He might want to use his first spell to initiate with it, but it also does put you in a dangerous position where if you take damage from the outside, we are going to be seeing TPs in. There's a snowball onto Chessie, meaning that there will not be such an easy target, but she's already topped that blade mail. She's taking heavy damage loss here. 89 damage stolen. We will be seeing, though, what I think is Cuckoo Dying in a lot of trouble. No one's TPing to help, and while the Broodmother is pushing, they know exactly where Cuckoo is, and the stolen damage is going to be expiring soon. Chessie goes for the ult anyway, and of course, when you're stunned up, it doesn't matter how much damage you've stolen. Uh, I think Mineski, uh, Mineski cannot fight anymore. I think it's past that, that time already. Uh, I think the best chances to farm their way back into this game. They have decent heroes for doing so, with the Brood and the Invoker, but it's going to take a lot of good game sense coming from the both of them to avoid dying during their split pushing, because they, they need all the farm they can get for the other three heroes, uh, the safer, safer areas. Mm -hmm. If if they're able to hold out some, or be, like when we look at the net worth, I think it's important to note they haven't lost significantly larger portions of gold. Sometimes when you're 5k net worth behind at 10 minutes, that ends up snowballing. Oh, speaking of snowballing, there's going to be a lot of damage going out onto Limp. He does drum away. Nice little engagement by Invoker. That's a good attempt. Yeah. A lot of damage. Just goes to show you how powerful Invoker is. So. I was gonna say, Mineski, if they can get some items up, raises a decent team fight hero. The Broodmother maybe can help them get some gold out by pushing. W what's the play? Mm, I mean, I. You think I they think just need to dodge for the, like, the rest of time, dodge. but do you yeah. also let towers go for this? Mm, well, uh, if uh, since uh, Chessy has ages, they're definitely not ready to fight just yet. They have to keep dodging. If they're going to fight, they have to wait out the ages at least, I feel. And then they can fight. I think if they're going to team fight, they need more on their invoker as well. He has Nero 2, so he's actually pretty strong right now. Nero 2 at this Radiant's stage is actually really strong. Is under attack. It is interesting. This is a very different invoke build than we've seen in previous games. We have a smoke coming out on this bottom lane. I if they could... I mean, the Legion commander... Is the problem. There are a lot of people close by. We'll see who they end up initiating They're on Ryo right. is saying hello on to Limp. Immediately the Moonlit Shadows is popped up. They do drop a sentry, unfortunately. A little bit over. Oh, actually running into another one. They dust up everybody. Legion Commander has already popped that blade mail. Somebody's getting dueled. And now there is the pull down Chronosphere combo we talked about. A nice media. They may actually end up picking up Chessie here. The auto attacks will have it. And on the other side of the fight, Marana. 
being chased up while they're still also chasing onto Hanskin. Not that they catch anybody else out here. I hear a wolf coming through. Hanskin is going to be able to get past that. So good for Mineski there. That was a great fight for Mineski. A, it looked super bad for them. They survived. <gasps> they survived through the, uh, the Chrono Sphere. Razor was able to stay alive. He drained all of Void's damage. It just turned the f around. So, uh, I, actually, I don't even know how they turned it around, actually. I'm there not actually were really surprised. Two different fights going on. The Legion Commander got away with just a little bit of health. And as you said, obviously the drain that when the Legion Commander isn't there to do damage in the Chronosphere, because she is actually a lot of their damage right now, and the Marana was forced to be playing around and so couldn't just hit an easy... She was over by the Legion Commander, couldn't hit an easy arrow in the Chronosphere for the kill. So. Razor's a little too tanky, that's what I believe. They couldn't kill him off. And it's kind of... The way you want to run, I feel, is that you don't really ever fight oh. with your... Oh, Ooh, sorry. Yeah, there, there is a weird business going on. Ryo, like, he's chasing them away because they really want to make sure this tower isn't denied, but he's taken a lot of heavy damage. The cooldown has already been expended, so they should get this for free, but a risky engagement for Mineski. They're actually doing pretty good now. They, I think they kind of, like, equalized the game. Yeah. I think, uh... Gold is a great this, this evoker with his necro build is making them so that they can actually fight and they're actually winning the fights too. Now they're gonna take this big old ancient stack, but the arrow it does end up just hitting a Necronomicon unit. Sundar Melon's being stunned up, he has a Chronosphere at the ready. Cuckoo, of course, is using that ult. It, this is a really risky play for Mineski. If they can get it, it's super worth it, but they do end up backing on out. They go couple. Yeah. It's, it's something, right? Yeah. They, tried, they tried to deny it. I mean, I they got away with not having to... You know, they got away without any casualties, so... Definitely a good thing for them. Kind of interesting to see Ruby getting Sonya and Asha. I don't think I've ever seen this before. <laughs> ah, so Sonja and Asha Broodmother, I... I have had this discussion with a couple of other players, and there are some people who think that Broodmother, just the way that incapacitating bite works, can be a very good fighting hero. Right. And so that's the Sanj and Yasha pickup. It's I, not... Yeah, go saying... ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I don't think it's as common as the Orchid or Midas build. Yeah, well, the thing about incapacitating bite is that it's gay. It's a really powerful anti-carry skill, mm -hmm. in the sense that, like, if you have, by the time you have uh, levels in incapacitating bite, it's not like the enemy carry is going to have anything counter to that. They either have to have BKB or, actually I'm not even sure if BKB prevents it, um, but like, it's not like they're going to have AKB or anything, so if you just focus down uh, your enemy's carry or something, like, they can't even fight back because capacitating bite is just so strong. Yeah. I... Uh, I think it can be obviously really great here against the Legion Commander, stopping potentially someone dying for a duel, or the Faceless Void as he continues to amp up, but realistically, this Legion Commander has been, I mean, Complexity has been very good about helping the Legion Commander out with the kills, so nobody's really getting that old uh, solo pick-off. You know, it's not like Legion Commander's finding people out alone, or something where the Broodmother can come and help. There's always backup. Yeah, Mineski are doing a good job in stick sticking together right now. Mm -hmm. And it seems like Radiant Potato is going for Atos. Radiant's top tower is I think I've seen Fata do this build. Radiant's top tower has fallen. I... I'm trying to think of why it's extra special here. Obviously there are some melee carries that you can kite around and you can argue with flat cannons down that you kite a gyrocopter. But I'm not 100% sure. Are they stealing the Roche? My goodness, Mineski, you have nerves of steel, but as I say that, Swindle Melons, Detective Swindle- Oh, he's not actually on the case. He is on the case. Detective Swindle Melons on the case. They are going to know that the 
Moonlit Shadows is coming. Both sides very aware of the other's positioning. And now Hanskin going to get blown up here. He's still alive. The cooldown comes in from the back lane, though. And there is the Chrono Sphere. Only catching Jesse Vasha, though. Damage is being stolen by On Limp through the BKB. Suddenly down 110 damage. And you do nothing with Flag Cannon. But they lose jewels on the backside. Ryo poking away at people with that incapacity. But not enough. Bounty Rune picked up in the middle of the team fight. While Jesse flees away. Overwhelming odds giving him a lot lot of move speed. Cuckoo still has quite a bit of damage. Oh, it's all about to be sapped away. And Chessy jumping in. They also knock out people with that time dilation. Cuckoo taking a lot of damage does go down. And will they get the final kill on Raging Potato? Yes, they will. Dilate just destroyed Invoker. <laughs> Couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Frozen can't, can't invoke or anything. It's really rough. The Void is actually a fantastic pickup here. Yeah, it, was it really is. They grabbed it super early. I, I believe it was Invoker first pick. It was Invoker first pick. It Invoker was... and Venge first yeah. pick. Yeah. Invoker, then the Venge, then the uh, Faceless, then the Chen, followed up by Mineski, and it worked so well. The Faceless Void, as you said. Yeah, it's really good. It's a good hero. So? It, like... Completely shuts down Invoker because you expect it. An Invoker has to invoke Tulsa, but if you're time dilated, you can't invoke anything after invoking once. Oh, more dual damage. Oh, goodness, yes, as you say that, there's gonna be an arrow. Marana stealing that kill, getting her uh, slay on, but she is 3 0 and 10. This Marana doing mad work around the map. Yep. He has a lot of farm too. He has four staff, he has a lot of boots, and he has 3k gold lined up. Mmm. I wonder what do you buy here? What utility, I would assume. I don't think it would be ill-advised. Who is their mech carrier so far? They don't have one, correct? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's fine too. Guardian Greaves is not bad. Yeah. It's, you can argue it's a bit late for the mech, but I think as you said, Guardian Greaves is never bad. The extra armor, especially against a team like this, Invoker's magical, but that's, the rest is a lot of physical damage, especially when you're faced up with a lot of minions. I think the extra armor does extra work. Yeah, Solar Solar Crest is not a bad idea here too, I think. Yeah, and that's a more classic Marana item, if you can say that, right? Marana is... Marana can build anything, anything. to be honest. Yeah. I mean, she, if she feels so inclined, because there are so many different units, there'll be so many damage instances from these units, she can go for Mjol. She feels like it. Yeah, I mean, that's not bad. You can always transition. I mean, with, uh, with a four staff in her inventory, it's, I feel like she's already useful enough. Anything else is just a tray on top. Oh, they're going to find Rude, maybe. So they're nice. standing right on top of Ryo, but Ryo is not moving a muscle, right? He's Ryo standing on top like... of the tree, so they can't actually see him. Yeah. Yeah, they can't actually catch him. The only way they see him is if uh, he shoots an arrow on top of him, gives him vision. So Ryo going to live to see another day in complexity, pulling further and further ahead. They're over 15,000 net worth ahead and 20,000 experience. When we take a look at some of these levels, Chen and Tusk still don't even have that level 2 ult. Yeah, I, I mean, they they had a bad start, so they... Oh, by the way, Swindles went bad so he's transitioning to carry right now. Oh, I... Yeah, I saw he had a lot of gold saved up, and then he bought something, didn't quite check the courier. Do you... Do you like the Battle Fury over something like the Maelstrom? Uh, in terms of armor, yeah, I prefer Battle Fury. He has the Midas already as well, though. It's a bit... He has some more farm for my farm. It's, 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 it's definitely a good item. Um, it's just going super hard have farm to be. Now they really have a you know, ton of damage. They don't they don't have to rely only on gyrocopter for damage. They have... They just let Le you just let Legion Commander do your own thing. Oh, speaking of doing your own thing, Legion Commander Chessy has been caught out. Does purge off, but then the incapacitating by Kasaito is the damage deal. The follow up, she turns around with her blade mail active. She will be caught out by the ice shards with the swap. And skin immediately the saving Legion her life. Radiant's and while all of that is happening, Swindle Melon's pushing bottom tower. Yeah, they can't kill her. She has pages. She has swap ready for her. She has blink. She has BKB. It's way too difficult to kill her. And like I was saying, 
in team fights, she just does her own thing. She just duels someone off on the side and just assume that they're dead. And then you have people, you have one person, one or two people in the chrono. Void can deal with that. And then Gyro just shoot everything. It's. They have a really good setup right now. So, full. Fondle Melons, he, I feel like. Lots of options there. Waldus is oyster itemizing. Uh, Solar Crest already up on the Venge, so Z Freak. Do you think it's a Lotus Orb? Uh, I think he's getting Lotus Orb. He has a perseverance. If it's not Lotus Orb, then. Possible. It's a little dangerous, I think, to Lotus Orb against a Tusk, but other than that, you know, it'll return the Razor Static Link so that you aren't punished by that as much, throwing uh, it on yeah, the Gyro. That's, that's true. And a lot of Invoker spells, of course. I think uh, Lotus Orb is probably the safest pickup here. Just so saw him put items. I just want full mule. Like that's. Uh, I think you get amazing procs with all of the units, but you know it's the sensible, safe choice for winning your team. The game is. I agree. The Lotus Orb. And uh, not to mention, Sven, uh, Ven Vengeful Spirit is the person who bought. Radiance top tower is under crest. attack. Yeah. With that. Top tower. Let's see, okay, there's gonna be some casualty warning, so they won't be able to get rid of that water. About, you know, complexity again, knocking at high ground early on in this game. The Lotus Orb, as we said, has been delivered to Marana, Limp, and Swindle Melon's taking a bit of damage, but immediately Lotus Orb's up. Ice Shard's gonna be off the mark. They're just gonna keep going. Oh, good job, Marana. Good job, Z Freak. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to back out right here. Okay, there's going to be a nice meatball, but immediately Swindle Melons backtracks most of the damage, and the Gyrocopter can get healed up by his teammates. I'm actually going to get nothing right about now. But this is his life stealing back up. Uh, they're ready to go again. Full health. The, they're actually... waiting for them. Yeah, I don't know whether they make anything of this though. Slendermelons will be seen there and has the... Okay, they're gonna snowball in. No Warriors Punch coming out of Jesse Vasha and now there it goes. Going down. Will we be seeing more? There's going to be a heal coming out from the Chen, but... They're, they're very quickly losing. Okay, now Cuckoo is going to be caught out by that Chronosphere. There's also the ult cooldown on all of them. Raging Kidok gets caught in the Chronosphere. The stun up as well. They do have buybacks on the input, but that's it. And it's looking like a Rax going down. They just, you just have no answer for this. You always have to be careful of the, 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 the uh, duel. You always have to be careful of Chronosphere. You can't stack up. If you don't stack up, Get dueled off from the side and no one can help you. They stack up, you'll, you'll all get chrono. So it's, they really have no answer for this. Yeah, and there's no nothing to stop Complexity from getting Mega Creeps here. Unfortunately, I think this is GG. I do think Mineski will try their best, but oh, no, they just call it. Really nice draft by Complexity. I like it a lot. Yeah, and I completely agree with you. Very different drafts. Obviously, they also ran a level 1 Roche lineup, so that one must have been a bit different as well. Showing their flexibility here. Shot from complexity. Um, I don't think Mineski performed poorly either. Obviously, they had a good game. Uh, uh, Mineski in the first one, they yeah, defended well. I think well. they're fine. I think they're fine. I just think that 